step design question to three guys. Guys, during a developer interview, and none of them gave the answer. A common system design question. It's not something extreme, it's a common one, and she asked three guys, none of them gave the answer. Let's see which question is it. The question. Weeks ago, a candidate came in and we started the interview, senior dev, third round process. Since he has interest, internet, company working experience, a famous e comms company. So we're trying to say he is experienced in internet and stuff. The first question I asked him, what do you do in your team? Tell me the details of the current project you're working on as detailed as possible. To be honest, TBH, I guess it's to be honest, this is a pretty standard question. I was expecting a solid, very prepared answer. He replied, sure, our team is dealing with payment, integration and payment gateways and sync invoices with banks and since our architecture is microservices, our team is working on payment service to provide payment service to other teams. Okay, good. So, so far I would say this uh, looks good, right? Then I asked, since your system is dealing with payment gateways, have you ever faced an issue like payment went through the gateway, but uh, however failed? on your side or found double invoices in the bank. Yeah, so th this is this is a, the first b basic question to ask whenever you're dealing with the payment system. Is this going to be a transaction? Uh, are you going to retry? If you retry the request, will there be a double payment? How do you prevent it? Let's see his answer. He replied, well, this sometimes happens. When it happened, we manually fixed it. Uh, so, well, this may, may sound extreme or not applicable or not good answer. It's still possible if this company is live and making money and this is the system and they manage to fix it and the code is a legacy code or uh, something like this and this is acceptable uh, how do you manually fix of, of course we should try to to make uh, things automatic but sometimes you're dealing with legacy systems and this is just the way they work right uh, the, the, the world is not a uh, perfect all the time and if we try to make it too much perfect, we might lose the business. So what is better? Having a business and manually fixing things or not having a business? Of course, it's not only these two options, but maybe this is the option. He didn't say. How do you manually fix? I asked again. Trigger some script to sync the data or status, he said. Do you mean manually roll back the transaction? either your side or the gateway or the banking. He said, yes, I asked again. So this is, this was not a clear answer on his side. Um, trigger some script to sync. Uh, it's beginning to sound like a, he does not really know what this script does. It depends uh, how much in charge, what exactly he did there. I asked again, let me ask this way. How do you make sure transactions are committed successfully in a distributed system? Okay, so this is a big question. A lot of papers on it, boxes, whatever. Manual fix, he said again. The answer. Let's see the answer. If you're interviewing for any position for an internet company or companies dealing with distributed systems, you need to look into distributed system transaction handling. 
let's dive into the detail straight away. So here she has the two-phase commit. So the two-phase commit here is, uh, we have here the actor, it's doing a start transaction. There is a coordinator for two-phase commit. First, we tell all the services prepare. Then we tell service B also prepare. And then once they are okay, we'll tell them now commit. It sounds like there, there is still a hole in this because what if when we tell them now commit, how can we trust? I mean, what if there is a disconnection in this, in this place? It, it does not explain this. But we do not see the solution here. What happens if when I told service B commit or rollback after we told them prepare? Then there is still an issue. Okay. The idea is simple as above. Here the coordinator is to make sure the calls to service A and service B happen none or both. Provide prepare interface on both service A and service B. So, so we first call prepare, call both prepare functions and get results. Make a commit or rollback. Wait, what if it keeps failing when committing rollback? Exactly what we asked. So store the, so the answer to exactly the question that we asked is store the status in the coordinator or can cache and set an expiry date, void the item after some time. Okay. But, but, but even in this case, when we store the status in the coordinator, we need to trust that when service B told us, yes, I have committed it, it actually committed it. Because, because what if it answers, I have committed it, but it just stored it in volatile memory and later on it would be gone. Okay. So we still need to trust service B and service A to actually do the actual commits. The cons are obvious. It is a blocking process, very bad performance. Yeah. Low throughput, long time locking on the resources, DB file. But, but in general, it, it does answer because we're telling everyone to prepare. Then we are telling them to um, commit. We get back the responses. And also this, this did not answer what is going on in case one of the services managed to commit and the other one failed. Then we need to issue a rollback. And then what happens if another one failed? Okay. Due to the above, these use cases are very limited to cross multiple database commit. Yeah. Simple and fast services. And most of the cases are expected to succeed. Retry is cost, taking up connection blocking quest could be used in synchronized processes and does not care about performance. Okay, so this is the standard solution, which consumes time and resources, as we said, uh, the two-phase commit. So now we have an improved version of three-phase commit. So compared to Two-phase commit, let's ask again. <laughs> so, so, so we're telling them uh, prepare. Okay, and then we're telling them uh, pre-commit. And then we ask them again. Let's say this. Maybe four-phase commit. Okay, so compared to two PC, three PC adds one more step. Can commit, pre-commit, sure. Are you sure you can commit? Are you really, really sure you can commit? And do the commit because you told me that you are really, really sure. Okay. So we see here, start transaction, one can commit, one here also can commit. Response yes, no. If response yes, then pre-commit, pre-commit. Let's see what it's doing in the pre-commit. And then we have here the final commit or the final rollback. Pros do not even have to do anything if the can commit call failed. Okay. Okay. If the can commit call failed, then we don't do anything. Split one commit call. 
into two smaller pieces. One focus on the pre-check. So, so basically we are moving some layers out of, uh, let's say the, the, the commit is doing 10 steps and only one of them is the actual commit. So let's do nine steps, see that everything is working correctly and only if everything working correctly, then call the commit. I don't see how this solves everything because if now the final commit fails on one service and succeeds on another service, then we still need to roll it back and then we'll have the same problem. Pre-check has checking like ping and another focus on business logic because above there should be a higher chance of the transaction to succeed. A higher chance. So we are dealing here with chances. Okay, but cons longer time locking. Is it still blocking? It is still a blocking process. Still coordinator fails, meaning yeah, yeah, yeah. If the coordinator itself fails, then uh, we got a problem. It has to be a cluster built with recovery process, super becoming possible, becoming complex. So what is this? This is C, try, confirm, cancel. Let's open this. This is the application. It's calling start transaction to the transaction manager. Okay, it's calling start transaction. Then it's doing a try. I see the line from the application, try to service A and also try to service B. So try, then the application here receive a success or fail. And then the application is telling the transaction manager to confirm or to cancel. So basically it looks like the application was asking the services to try the transaction. And then the transaction manager uh, actually asked him to, to, to confirm or to cancel. As you can see above, the first thing is every service needs to implement this contract interfaces, try, confirm, and cancel for the caller. Then two roles in the picture, application, which is the business app calls try service to attempt to make a transaction, pre-check, prepare resources, etc. So as we said, the application is, is calling the services, the multiple services, and trying to create the transaction. Transaction manager, it tracks the transaction happening in the store logs, okay then makes rollback or commit based on the service call. It talks to different services and provides a wrapper for the business app to confirm or cancel. This looks better, why? But there is limitation. The service call must be idempotent, meaning same input, same output. Yeah, in general, when we make calls which are idempotent, this means that for the same given input, we would get the same given output. So if we try to apply something to a bank account and we have some ID, if we try it with the same ID, then uh, the services should treat it as the same request. So they should not add again and again these $10 because they have the same ID why to support retry commit or cancel when commit or cancel multiple times no side effect to the system pause reduced lock compared to 2pc or 3pc and support retry every service must provide retry try confirm or cancel services which may not make sense to other services i have to say that that around all this there are some other patterns which involves logging we write things to a log to some kind of commit log and then we have another process which reads this commit log maybe it's called event processing to call this commit log it makes sure that the the, the 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 commit logs is the same as reality then we have other problems because we can have delays because we just read from the commit log instead of uh, making all the services saga pattern another pattern Saga is just a name. It is a pattern in distributed systems to make sure of transactions. 
problem with two PC or three PC is obvious, blocking and locking, which leads to slow and low throughput. TCC could be applicable to some use cases, but not all, and for the try, confirm, cancel implementation limited to use cases. We need something else to handle more use cases. Let's start with something, something simple. Use the e-coms process as following. Other service, payment, deduct, delivery, what is this? So when the exception happens, we want to make sure everything rollbacks properly, meaning make the video happen. Order service, if success payment, deduct, uh, delivery. And each time there is a fallback, we fall back to the previous step. Second part here is to solve the problem. We see here the order service. By the way, the, uh, the question was general. What did you do in your previous projects? But I guess the quest, the actual question is how do you handle, uh, like, uh, transactions? How do you handle transactions in distributed system? The generic question. Order service. So we have here all the processes. We try each of them and we roll back if it failed. Above is the orchestration version of the SACA pattern. The idea is simple. Put a service wrapper. What is the service wrapper? This is the service wrapper. Or called, okay, <laughs> coordinator, orchestrator in the middle to talk to every service provider and make sure that the rollback calls a are happening correctly, the growing complexity could potentially make this service worker become the bottleneck. Yeah, because if there are 20 steps in this instead of four, then this would get complex. In terms of complexity or performance, so need to make sure this middle service keep it simple, do performance benchmarks, availability, prepare recovery mechanism. Pro simple and easy to understand, is it there's no info. Service wrapper could grow complex because bottleneck of single pull and fire. Saga has another version, it's called Choreography. <clears throat> so I have to say that this is becoming complex. <clears throat> Distributed transactions. This is why sometimes uh, event logging can be a good option to resolve all this. Uh, problematic use cases. See this? Where is it starting? Message rollback, message queue. Yeah, so they inserted here a message queue. They have here the order service, the delivery service. Where is the client? The inventory service and the payment service. So it looks like this is the client, like it's trying to make an order, and when it's trying to make an order, then there is a queue, a message here, payment service gets it back, puts another message in the queue, then inventory check it, then delivery, and then it's putting at the end, uh, basically the communication here is via a queue, so instead of in the previous question when we have the process serially, we go one to another, then you put the message, in the queue and you let all the rest of the system consume this message, do the next thing, consume the message, do the next thing. Yeah, I like this better because it's decoupling the, the system. If the system is simple, then the previous architecture is good. If the, simple, the system becomes complex, then we do need this message queue. The implementation is very different. Instead of having a SACA service wrapper, the coordinator in the middle, every service is tied to a message worker. They are short of rollback themselves, so everything depends on the message queue. What actions are driven by the message? The idea is that all, all process is async. Every service is subscribed to the message center. Pros, no need to build the middle service. Service dependencies on the own messages. No need to, meet, uh, to build a middle service. Service dependency is only on messages and all async processes made the system easy to scan in terms of business. 
לא יודעת מי לי מסאג' ברוקר כן be scale down. instead of turning up cons complicated to understand true how to test yeah. just imagine starting this system on your uh, laptop or developing environment this is going to be pretty complex to debug where, where are the logs of the queue what happens if the queue blows up what happens to the message okay there is total complexity here I'm missing here some some solutions some some simple solutions some some right to a log file this is basically I guess the queue yeah conclusion try to go to message broker I agree with this and limit uh, the number of defined messages as protocol as minimum as possible I think the main pattern to take from here is that when we have a service that calls a service that calls a service that calls a service or something similar we have many points of failure But when all we do is just put a message in a queue, then we have less points of it. System c- complex, too many messages flowing through and make it hard to control or test back to the conversation. Uh, okay, last, when I asked this question, I was not expecting any kind of day to get back all the above, but I do expect some thought process and at least see the old back change problem. Then bring up to discuss, share all details here in case any pieces are useful for you. Again, do not answer manual rollback <laughs> when you were asked the same question. Happy learning. And this deserves a clap. A couple of more. Thanks for reading. Yep, yep, yep. This was a good one.